Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out this podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. Don't get stuck putting all those miles and depreciation on your personal vehicle. Instead, check out the Fair for Uber Car Program. I used the program for 10 weeks. It was super simple, and Fair even arranged for Uber to pick me up at my home and drive me to my new car, which was a nice Hyundai Elantra for $195 per week plus taxes. That price includes the car, plus your rideshare insurance, and best of all, unlimited miles. Now, when you compare this program to Lyft's program, the cost for the car is less and the bonuses are more. The program is available in California for now, but there are other programs all across the country. So check the FAIR website for prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out, download the FAIR app, get a car today. It's a great program. And be sure to use our code, which is RSG100, RSG100, so we get credit for sending you there. All right? All right. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, have I told you about Audible? Sign up today and you get a free audiobook from Audible. I'm highly recommending the new book called Super Pumped, The Battle for Uber by Mike Isaac. They're even making a show about this book on Showtime. So go to therideshareguy.com forward slash audible. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E for a 30-day free trial and one free audiobook. So you can get this book for free. Audible is great for drivers on the road. Go to therideshareguy.com forward slash audible. All right, let's talk to Mr. Joe. All right, Dojo Nation, what a treat we've got uh, for you today. We are going to be looking behind the kimono of the rideshare guy with uh, our special guest, And you all know him, Mr. Joe Pierce, video contributor to the Rideshare Guy, a a five-and-a-half-year driving professional uh, for both Uber and Lyft. And I I was just talking to Joe, and I said, Joe, you got to come on to the podcast. (laughs) We got to talk about Lyft and Harry and (laughs) God knows what else. (laughs) So, Joe Pierce, welcome to the dojo. Jay, thank you for having me, sir. I am glad that I'm able to to finally make an appearance. So looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. So um, I guess my first question is, um, so you've been driving longer than me, uh, five years. I, I'm, I will hit four years this, this December. Yeah. Um, how much driving are you doing these days? Are you like a part-time driver, just on weekends, full-time? What? So I'm doing anywhere from say 25 to 30 hours a week. So okay. not, not quite a full-time 40 hour, but still, a, still a decent amount. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, um, oh yeah, that's four days. If you do, if you do eight hour days, that's four, four full days. Yeah. Yeah. And, and my schedule is typically, so I put, I put in heavy Monday and Tuesdays, um, <clears throat> typically about 11, 12 hour days. Oh, and wow. then I'll sprinkle in, yeah, I'll sprinkle in some AM hours, Wednesday and Thursday. It's just, it works best with my schedule to do it that way. Mm-hmm. So, so that's how I do it. And that's what I love about rideshare is the flexibility that it allows us to have where we can pick and choose what hours and what days work best. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, how did you get started with Harry? My, 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 uh, my story is I was, I was in Bali and I, I got a, an email and I thought, gosh, you know, I could write some cool articles about being a driver and 
I sent him an email and we eventually agreed to, to start. And that was over two years ago now. How did you get started? Yeah, so I I was following Harry, gosh, for a couple years, just followed the blog and watched a few of the YouTube videos. And uh, he eventually, it was, I forget which article it was, but he listed something at the top of the article saying, we're looking for contributors. Mm-hmm. I basically answered that call. I remember um, that. Submitted my, mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I su- submitted my application and he told me, so he had a bunch of submissions and he said there were only a few that actually submitted the um, the the video. There was a video that he asked for. He said it wasn't required, but it was just a video. And so yeah, I was one of the few that that submitted one of those, and and I got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I at the same. <laughs> I guess we both started doing videos about that same time, because um, initially he said he had someone, and I guess that was you. But then, as I wrote more articles, I said, you know, let me can I can I have a crack at making the video too? And um, I just love to write the article and then make the video, you know, and and do those two things together. Um, do you do you do any of any write any articles? Or you're solely a video guy. So he'll have me do um, occasional articles. I do them very seldomly. Mm-hmm. I think I've done a, hand, a handful over the two years that I've been. Yeah, um, working for working with Harry, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, typically. So I'll script out a video, which a script is essentially could be turned into an article. Mm-hmm. But I'll script out a video, and then yeah, and then we'll just turn that script into a video, and that's typically what I do. So yeah, mostly just just mm-hmm. video YouTube work. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, I like to stay busy with 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 the videos and, and the articles. So I'm constantly sending you know emails to uh, Melissa and Harry saying. You know, how about it? How about this? How about that? How about this? How about that? And, you know, like, I don't know, half of them, they just shoot down. But, you know, that's how I get, you know, a decent amount of work done. Uh, do you do go through the same process? Do you keep throwing ideas at them and, and, and seeing what sticks? Yeah, so I, I'm definitely not as active as you. You're, you're, you're putting content out there constantly, which I, I really appreciate. I, I, I don't know how you do it. You, you seem like a pretty busy guy. But um yeah, I mean, I I dedicate, gosh, I'd say about anywhere, probably typically ten hours a week to the rideshare guy. Um, I'll throw video video ideas, topic ideas at Harry occasionally. Um, I don't do it as often. He he'll usually have ideas where he'll want me because I'll I'll do like the app demos and stuff, like the driver and passenger app demos. So these these are constantly needing to be to be updated throughout the year or right. every year. So um. It, the stuff. So typically, my my subjects, um, the topics that I have, Harry will sub, will will throw those my way, and and that's typically how it goes. So yeah, I'm not submitting too many topic ideas, but I, I will submit those to him occasionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. It's I mean, it, it, for me, it's just fun. I mean, you know, it, it's nice to drive. I, I do enjoy the driving. I, I'm I'm more of a part time driver now than I was before. And and you know we drive and we think oh that's kind of interesting I bet I bet I could make a video about that <laughs> you know yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah so let's talk about the elephant in the room Lyft you know I I did oh, a gosh. I did a whole podcast episode just on what what is going on with Lyft and um, and it came out of you and me talking uh, about what was going on with Lyft so it's uh, I, uh, Lyft, Lyft was my company, you know, and, and just in the, like the last six months, they just uh, like turned into Uber. Um, and, and, and sometimes even, even worse, you know, um, what's been your biggest gripe with, with Lyft of late? I guess you, you, you had quite a, yeah. Can you kind of go over what happened with, with your, with your video and, and the response you got from Lyft? Yeah. So I, I too am in agreement. It's quite mind boggling what Lyft is doing. Um, I've been a Lyft supporter. So I was back when I started driving, Lyft wasn't as popular. This was right at the beginning, like right when they launched in Minneapolis. So I actually became a Lyft driver before I became an Uber driver. So I've always had an affinity for Lyft. I've always thought they were the better company. That's why these missteps lately are just so surprising. I get it. They're a public company and, and think maybe policy is changing. I'm not sure, but yeah. So they made these rate changes in, gosh, I think it was 14 markets. 
Minneapolis and St. Paul was one of them, which is the market I drive in. Uh, so they're, they're doing these where, where you get paid from the moment that you accept the ride, right. which is great. But they cut our, our per mile rate nearly in half, which is right when I, when I, cause I know you did a video on this a two lot, or three months bef- before it happened. Yeah. Quite, a, quite a ways, in, in my quite a ways back. Yeah. 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 And mm-hmm. when, when you made that video, I was like, gosh, I do not want to see this come to Minneapolis. Like we don't need that here. Um, and then late August, we ended up getting those changes here. And I was really bummed because I knew what the, I, I just knew in my mind what the effect would have. So I tried those rates for a couple of weeks. I was thinking, well, maybe my pickups are a little bit further away than, than I thought. And they, they weren't, they averaged, you know, I'm, I'm still not, if you cut my per mile rate in half, it's not going to incentivize me to drive say 10 miles to pick someone up just because you're paying me at, at the moment that I accept the ride. That's mm-hmm. not incentive for me, especially when I know that there's an alternative Uber where I can immediately switch over to their app and get paid a, a, almost double a, a, the mileage rate. So right, right. That, that mentality, yeah, I just don't understand. But anyways, so I tried these rates for a couple weeks. My earnings were down on average 10%. On the long rides, I was getting hit like 25% they were down. Mm. So – um, I told Harry this. I said, this is my experience. I'm tracking my earnings in a spreadsheet. Let's do a video on it. So we did a video on it. It got, it was really popular. I know a lot of drivers were really upset about this. That's, pr- that's the main reason it was so popular. Um, and yeah, so that reached the popularity that it did. Then the, there's a driver advisory council member, a Lyft driver advisory council member that's located here in Minnesota. He saw the video. He forwarded it to Lyft without me knowing at this point. Mm-hmm. Then I think it was a week later, two weeks later, he contacted me on Facebook saying, you know, I really liked your video. Um, I was the one that forwarded it to Lyft. And, and I'll backtrack here a little bit too. So shortly after he forwarded it to Lyft, Lyft ended up sending me an email saying, oh, you're one of our top drivers in Minneapolis and St. Paul. We'd like to reach out and talk to you about the rate cuts. Mm-hmm. Or the, not, not, they didn't say rate cuts, but the rate change. Yeah. And so, and so I was, and and they really they didn't say anything about oh we saw your video. They were just kind of saying oh you're this top driver. We want to talk to you. Um, I and I had basically sent Harry a text that day saying this is what I just got reached. This, this was the day of the video that the video was posted actually. Right. I, I sent Harry a text saying. You know, do you think this is coincidental? And we knew it was not coincidental. So right. anyways, the local driver advisory council member, he was the one that reached out to Lyft, forwarded them, them the video wanted to talk to me. And I ended up talking to them that week. Um, it was, I think, Friday of that week. And I basically just reiterated to them exactly the points that I said in the video. So it was kind of like they really didn't need to talk to me. I mean, it right. was more of a personal way to to you know, talk to me, but, but yeah, they could have gotten all the points from the video, but, um, and then I think like maybe a week later we published a video on the rideshare guy about that interaction with Lyft and and the comments were, (laughs) the comments were not happy. Like there was part, part of me in the video where I was like, you know, I felt like Lyft was trying to be genuine with these cuts a little, or these rate changes, but I mean, it's, and all the comments were just kind of blasting me for that mentality, saying, "No, they they have the data. They know what they're doing. They yeah. knew that it the, the rate it's it's essentially a rate cut because here's what's going to happen. It, you know, it, they're paying us from the moment that we accept the ride. But this system, they're going to continue to add drivers to their system. Those pickups are going to become shorter and shorter. So that's less pay for drivers. It's a rate cut. That's oh, what, plain and simple, what it is. Well, plain and simple, and you, and you know." So sometime last year, the, towards the end of last year, they came out with the um, "you guys want more consistent pay" line, and and we're going to cut the mileage, but we're going to increase your per minute, and and it, you know your your pay should stay about the same. And I was like, oh, hold on a second, let me take a let me take a week and run my numbers through both systems, <clears throat> you know, because I, I I took the miles and the minutes for each ride. And it was like five percent less, you know, and and you did the same thing when they it instituted this other system, and yours was ten percent less. So, 
I mean, we're not bra- we're not brain surgeons. I mean, of course, Uber and Lyft know exactly what they're doing. You know, with these changes, five uh, percent less to all the drivers in the United States. That's got to be a lot of money. You know, and now and now Lyft with ten percent less to all you know the drivers in these test markets. Um, and I just pray to God that they don't bring this to uh, to to the Bay Area because I, and I I just don't. I don't think they can like a market like San Francisco, which is probably one of the most efficient markets in all of the country. Those pickups are, 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 can't be too far away for you. And I, I know you, you've talked about it multiple times, how close your pickups are. They yeah. just, they, they can't do that. They could not justify that type of change. Um, I don't think, but with all the change, with all the stuff that they're doing, who, who knows? knows? I mean, I, know. I, I can't be, wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. I, uh, I wrote an article <laughs> called uh, called uh, three more things I don't like about Lyft, and uh, one of them was uh, the uh, the destination filter that there you know went from six to two. Um, one was that their new Express Drive program is now it's no longer unlimited miles. So while you're driving for Lyft, it's unlimited, but for your personal miles, now you have to pay extra, <clears throat> and. Uh, and then they added the slider feature on the app, which I just hate it. You know, I just, it was so easy to just to push a button, touch it. Now you got to like, it's just like, why, 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 why? You know, why? It's just that, I don't know who, yeah. who comes up with these I mean, ideas. But but what I want, but what, yeah, but what I wanted to say was Harry's response was, <laughs> okay, we've come on, we've hit lift pretty hard <laughs> let's yeah. uh let's hold off on that on that article for a bit <laughs> i said okay all right but <laughs> you know um but and, and we've hit we've hit lift pretty hard but they've deserved every minute of like they deserve all of it because this is so i mean it, our our channel the blog we're trying to talk to drivers about what's happening to them and this is a huge topic like Oh. We, all the videos and all the content I think that we've been producing about this Lyft stuff has really generated a lot of attention. So this is what drivers want to see. Like they, they want to see us talking about this, advocate, advocating for them, mm-hmm. you know, being informational. Um, they're, they're interested and they're, they're pissed. They're upset with Lyft. Like this is not – this is so unlike – go no. ahead. Sorry. No. Anytime you fuck with our money, right, and that's exactly <laughs> yeah. what, what's happening you know? here, we're not going to be happy. There's just no, you know, I mean, of course, if we, if we, if we went to the people at Lyft and said, Hey, you know, we're we're trying this new payment program for you guys. You're actually going to get paid 10% less, you know? Yeah. Of course, everybody who worked for Lyft would be, you know, it would be, it would be an uproar, you know, it'd be a revolt, you know, like, what are you doing? How can you can't do that? Blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to the drivers, well, you know. They can always get more drivers, so they're going to just they're going to keep whittling away at us, you know, until it's a real problem. But at this point, it's not a real problem because they do have the advantage that driving for Uber and Lyft does provide you with a lot of freedom and flexibility. Like you said, you know, we can drive when we want. We can still make some money. We can still put the money immediately into our bank account, and that's attractive. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. And I'd like to quick. So back to the 10%. So my, my personal earnings were down 10%. Now, you have some drivers, which it's not efficient and it's not the smart way to drive, in my opinion, and it can be totally up to you. you have some drivers that accept every single ride. Mm-hmm. So they're accepting rides that are 10 plus miles away, which in my opinion is really not a smart thing to do from both the driver's perspective and the lift perspective. You're making your system more inefficient the drivers having to drive all these miles, um, just all these deadhead miles, basically, to pick up a passenger. And so those drivers might actually be making a little bit more in, in terms of actual ride payments. But in terms of operating their business, their rideshare business, which is essentially what we're doing as rideshare drivers, they're operating closer to a loss because of all that extra mileage that they're incurring. So, yeah, my earnings – my gross earnings on average were down 10%. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but the net earnings of a lot of these drivers, their gross probably could be the same. 
but their net has to be down because of the rate changes. So yeah, I just, I mean, it's not a 10, it's not necessarily a 10% decrease, but it's just overall, in my opinion, the main thing it does to the lift system is just makes it much more inefficient. And yeah. I've been driving with, with Uber now for the past month because it doesn't makes no sense to drive for Lyft. Mm-hmm. And Uber's system here, at least, and, I, and I'm not sure about other markets, I'm guessing it's more efficient. Uber's just bigger. They have more drivers, more passengers. Right. It's just much more efficient. I, I <laughs> seldom, if ever, got destination mode rides with Lyft in my market. Mm. I mean, I would get them occasionally. With Uber, every single Monday and Tuesday, I get at least three when I'm on my way home. Say, And typically, I'm about... 10 miles away from my, my home and mm-hmm. I'll get destination rides. It's just so much more efficient. And that's what Lyft should be pursuing is making their system efficient like Uber, because if they keep doing stuff like this, they are not going to be able to compete with Uber long term. No, I mean, and you're in a perfect example. You were a Lyft driver. Now you're almost exclusively an Uber driver. So they lose a good driver based on the policy that they just you know initiated up there in Minneapolis. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so the marketplace will, uh, you know, give them give them feedback, and then that, then they'll decide what to do next. Yes. Uh, so, <clears throat> going back to to us being uh, longtime contributors to the rideshare guy, what do you like most about making videos? Um, I'll be honest. I I enjoy the I enjoy being able to do it from my home. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's another flexible way to earn. By just and, and being able to do it whenever I want to, and you know, it's 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 similar to rideshare driving, and that's kind of how I want to continue to earn income moving forward in all ventures is being able to do it flexibly on my time. Mm-hmm. There's just there's so much freedom to that, to not having it like say, and nothing against people that have their nine to five. You know, some yeah. people enjoy that, but but there's I I I had a nine to five for seven years before getting into rideshare driving and it was great money. I was doing well, but it just, there's, there's a certain, I felt chained to that. And the stuff that I do now, rideshare driving, um, working for Harry, other things, um, there's a freedom to it. There's a flexibility to it. I, I, yes, I have to get, get work done. I have to pay the bills, but I can do it on my time. And I guess that's, that's the best part about the stuff that I personally do is the flexibility that it provides me. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, I mean, it's good money too. I mean, I I could I could stay home and make two videos, which would take about four hours, right? Or I could go drive for about twelve hours, all right? I mean, and make the same kind of money. So it's it's uh it's you know it's more of a skill. There's more of a skill set involved in making the videos, and we get paid well well for our time. Correct. You know, when you when you look yeah. at it per hour. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and you're not having to depreciate your vehicle in the process. So you're you're able to just right. We just, just go, sit, we just sit yeah. in it, <laughs> sit <Correct>. in it <laughs> with a. <laughs> I don't know what you use. I, I've got this, uh, you know, this tripod, and I got this little attachment. I put my iPhone up there. I plug in my little lavalier mic. Make sure yep. the light's okay and go. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I've, lately I've been doing. So I was doing the in car videos, but I would basically. <laughs> Some of those I would shoot in my garage because I, I I have twin girls, so I watch them um, during the day some days, and I typically shoot my videos when they're when they're napping, and so I'll just go out to the girl because Harry wanted us to start shooting videos in, in the car to kind of get that, that that type of feel for the channel, right. um, and just the lighting wasn't great and whatnot. So I'm right now I'm basically what I'm doing is just getting my setup all in my in the kitchen of my house. I give have good lighting and all that. It's just a much better video in my opinion than than trying to to force myself to do videos in my car. Yeah, uh I haven't gotten the okay to to venture out <laughs> of the out of the car, so I but well, I, well, I get, but I don't, yeah. I don't I mean I for me it it works just fine. I just pull it out of the garage into the driveway and and um Sure. It it uh sometimes it can get warm if uh if the su- you know if the sun's shining and oh, it's yeah. a warm day. So um, I do have a spot I can go where I can park under some trees, you know, so I'm so I'm in the shade and the sun isn't beating down. But um, and then I don't know how you do this, but I, I really love batching the things. So, like, for example, I just wrote an article. I'm going to write one more article today. So that'll be two articles. And then I wrote two last week. And then Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to go out and knock out four videos in a day. So wow. it's what's well, just much more efficient though, because I can just sit yeah. in the car, 
I put my laptop, you know, in the passenger seat and I got my little outline and I just go one, you know, and I just let the thing run for whatever, 12 minutes of recording. And then I go to the next one. So I'll sit in the car for like an hour, but I'll have four recorded. Then it's just sitting down and editing them all, which takes about an hour a piece for me at this point. Yeah. So. And yeah. do, do you, what do you, do you use, what specific software do you use for your, your editing? Well, thank you, uh, uh, Apple. Um, <laughs> I was using Final Cut Pro, um, which I got free somewhere. And then I upgraded to uh, the, the new operating system called Catalina. And the old ver- the old version of Final Cut Pro does not work with Catalina because it was 32-bit and Catalina requires 64-bit. So now uh, I'm making the switch over to iMovie. Sure. Um, yeah, so I'll be using iMovie because I don't want to spend $300 for Final Cut Pro when iMovie does essentially the same thing. And for what we yeah, do, I- we don't have a lot of special effects or anything like that. So Absolutely. Yeah, I've been using iMovie from the very beginning. I think it, it – it's – it suffices just fine. Yeah, I thought I thought about purchasing Final Cut a while back, but it's yeah, the stuff that we do isn't too involved. So yeah, yeah editing via iMovie is very simple. It's straightforward. I I basically I have a ten year old laptop that that's what I use a MacBook Pro. Mm-hmm. I upgraded the the uh, hard drive. I, I went to an SSD and and upgraded some of the RAM. And I've been I mean I, it's it's bare bones kind of the operation that I have as far as editing the videos, but it works just fine and. I kind of am able to do it on the cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let me ask you just some uh, driver questions as we wrap up here. So, tell, uh, share with, share with uh, all those drivers out there. What's been your best ride experience, and what's been your worst ride experience? Start with your worst. My worst. Gosh, this is this is something that I've never. I, I really, I've mentioned this to a few passengers, but I've never mentioned it. I've, I've not told family members, so maybe I won't have them listen to this podcast. But um, it was an Uber ride. Gosh, this was maybe four years ago. So this was but shortly, like shortly after this ride happened, I looked at it as a sign. Okay, I'm going to go over to Lyft and drive full time for them for a while. And I ended up doing Lyft for three years shortly thereafter this experience. But I gave a passenger a ride to a not so great part of town. Um, he said he was meeting a friend there. He ended up, he was, what are you going to say something, Jay? I was going to ask you, so is it a uh, like a, a drug riddled part of town? Is it the sex part of town? Is it, um, <laughs> you know, what, when you um, say cr- the crime. bad, the crime, a lot of crime. Okay. Yep, the crime. I'll say crime. Yeah. And, and okay. people, people that live here would, would, it's North, it, it's the North Minneapolis area. There's, it, it, and this is not to say that the entirety of North Minneapolis is terrible, but there's some terrible as far as crime but there's some definitely some pockets but okay. uh All right. yeah so i was bringing and this was on the outskirts so it wasn't like the heart of a crime riddled area yeah. but yeah i was bringing him to meet a friend in quotation marks and huh. ended up he was conducting a craigslist transaction he was selling someone a laptop okay so he proceeded to get out of my car walk up to the to the front porch of this house and the guy was already sitting out there waiting for him and he was going to conduct this Craigslist transaction. Right there in front of my eyes, the guy pulled a gun on the, the my passenger and basically robbed him at gunpoint right there and then. Oh. Uh, it was it was just unbelievable. It, it was unbelievable. I and I was just in shock. Like, what's going to happen next? You know, am I am I going to get robbed? Um, the the passenger that was conducting the transaction freaked out, hopped in my car. The, the other guy ran away. Um, I was just like, what just happened? He explained to me, you know, I was conducting a Craigslist transaction. The guy robbed me, blah, blah, blah. I hightailed out of there, drove him home free of charge, obviously. And I told him, we got to we got to call the cops. We got to contact the cops. And he's like, um, this guy knows where I live. I can't do that right now. And I said, you know, you have to do something for me. You have to at least let whoever know what authorities know that this just happened to you because – this is just an an unbelievable event, but yeah, that's that is my first ride. It was pretty pretty crazy, and th- yeah, then shortly thereafter, maybe I took that as a sign, and then about yeah. a week later, <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm gonna drive drive Lyft exclusively for a while here. Um, it's a little, I mean, the same thing possibly could have happened with Lyft, obviously, right, but right. 
Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was one crazy experience. <laughs> yes, yes, you win. <laughs> you win for best yes. worst experience uh, being a being a driver. Well, you didn't get beat up or hit or anything like that. But luckily, yes, luckily yeah. nothing happened but to me personally. You yes. def- definitely could have been shot. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's uh, flip that over now. What, what's been your best uh, uh, best ride experience? You know, there there's not one in particular that sticks out that's best, but the mm. best rides are mm. the ones, and these don't happen too often because a lot of times people just want to get a ride and they want to sit in the back, relax, and get a ride. But the best ones are where you have good, engaging conversation with the passengers. So, you know, I enjoy to talk sports when I can talk sports with someone from out of town about their local team or my local teams, I really enjoy those conversations. And the rides just, they pass in an instant because you're more focused on that. Granted, you know, you, you have to focus on driving, but being able to just interact with someone on that, that level and just have a good, engaging, lively conversation, those are the best rides. And those will happen, I'd say, maybe, you know, 5% of the time. But those are still, those are great rides. Yeah. Yeah, those are great rides. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> all right, awesome. So uh, let me just wrap up with uh, the, the 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 big three questions that I ask everybody. Um, actually, let me ask one other question before I get into the last three. Um, what's your, what's your what's your like your plan B? What what uh, you know? You're a, you're a smart guy. You're, you're a, an entrepreneur. You got a, you got a family. Where where do you think you're going with this? So you know what's what's sort of the next thing for you? You're a younger man, right? What are you like in your late thirties? Yeah, thirty. Gosh, thirty-seven. Yep. Thirty-seven. Okay, yeah. So pretty young man. Um, yeah. Where do you see, where do you see yourself going? Where, where do you see yourself? Let's just say in five years. You know, personally, I enjoy working for Harry. I yeah. do. But I'd like to have my own channel. So I, mm. I have a YouTube channel. Channel uh, MSP Driver is is the name of the channel. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to get my own channel going, and 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 I have I I kind of um, tinkered with websites here and there. Nothing has really taken off. I think you just really have to dedicate yourself to that. And I, you know, I'm like I'm I'm really starting to get my channel going mm-hmm. and just say okay, my goal right now is to have at least one video a week that I'm gonna that I'm gonna continue to to get just get content out there so Mm -hmm. and then that will ramp up to hopefully two and maybe three eventually but but yeah it's um i guess my plan b is to get a channel going kind of do what harry's kind of has done you know right get and and do whatever multiple websites whatever works but also try to just dedicate myself to it put my head down and really um kind of like it's not going to happen overnight and which is no, in, a... in the ventures that I've in the ventures that I've tried to start in the past websites whatnot like it, nothing's caught fire but it, the way I see it is it's it's not going to catch fire probably it's something that I'm going to have to dedicate myself to you know maybe it's maybe it'll take a couple years before I can get to the level that I mean Harry what we've got 50,000 subscribers on YouTube now mm-hmm. um maybe it will take a few years for me to get to that point but eventually I'd like to be just producing my own content um, right. instead of, and I love working for Harry. I love doing it. He's afforded me, you know, this, it's, it's a great, a great opportunity to be able to work for Harry. Yeah. But you, I'd also like to, to do my own thing. Yeah. 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 You've gotten a lot of exposure, you know, a lot of exposure through, yeah. through Harry and, um, and you can keep doing that. So as you keep building your channel, you can keep, re- you know, you can reference your channel. Um, and, uh, you know, cross pollinate. So it's it's a it's definitely a slow build, um, but the the key is consistency. And um, yeah, I would yeah, I think you're you're right on. Just keep keep putting something out there every single. I'm doing a podcast now. Other I do this podcast, but then I also do a daily podcast, um, which is just about one minute long every single day. And um, you know. It's easy to do. I love doing it. And just day by day, you know, one or two more people join in, you know, and it's just slowly yep. growing. And it it's not to make money. It's just to, you know, get people to know what I'm all about, you know, other than being a driver. And um, yeah, so great. That sounds awesome. Yeah, you're the guy to do oh, it. And, and quickly, that's that's been in the back of my mind, too, is just to do a podcast, like just mm-hmm. to get a podcast going. There's part of me that wants to like 
um, monetize it right away and be able to, to have an idea that just I can make money doing it. But there's also part of me that there's topics that I have that I'm passionate about that I like to just sit down and, and, and start, a, start a podcast and, and talk about things. And I've played with the idea and maybe it's something something that I should get going. Yeah. Well, if you're serious about it, talk to me afterwards and I can tell you a, a program you can get involved in that's not too expensive where you'll have a podcast up and running inside of seven seven weeks. That's how I got this started and the other one started. And it's there's more moving parts than you think. It's not as it's not as simple as you think, um, but uh, it's certainly doable. And um, yeah, there's there's just certain specific steps to take. But that's how I got started. I just felt like I've I've been thinking about this for two freaking years. I better just lay down some money and have somebody teach me and support me to get it done. Yeah. And, nice. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are at I think episode fifty two. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, great. So um, here we go. Big three. What is your favorite movie of all time? The one that popped in my head, it might not be, but Top Gun. Great movie. Top Gun. And you know they're coming out with a sequel to that now. Oh, I, I cannot wait. I cannot <laughs> wait, Jay. I am. I, with the day that that trailer came out, I was pumped. I was happy to see. <laughs> Preaching to the choir, yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Um, on your phone. Okay, I don't know if you have an iPhone or what, but there's wallpaper that you can put a picture on. Um, do what pictures do you have on on your wallpaper on your phone? So I have an iPhone. I've had this same wallpaper for years. It's basically just uh, a picture of the sky and a calm ocean. Hmm. So it's just kind of like a serenity scene, basically. Got it. Got it. Okay, and then um, Joe Pierce walks into the room. What is the what is the theme song? What is you what is it you what what is the vibe you want to impart as you enter the room? <laughs> wow. That is a difficult question. The theme song. Jeez. Nothing's really coming to mind. Um gosh, maybe similar to my to my iPhone background screen, something calm, maybe some some jazz or some some piano music or something something uh Give me a, give me an artist. Give me a song. What what who who do you listen you to? Yeah, um, I really like like Max and Siren. Have you heard of his piano at all? He he does some covers of uh, like he does a cover of Pixies. Where's my mind? He does a cover. What's his of, What's uh, his no name? Cars. Ma- Max Max Maxence M A X E N C E. I think that's how it's spelled. Siren C Y um, R I N. Yeah, and yeah. He just does he does some really cool piano covers. He did, uh, yeah, he did another cover of No Cars Go by uh, Arcade Fire. Just really good songs. There it is. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the room, Mr. Joe Pierce. <laughs> I love it. I love it. There you go. That's uh, very um, calming and pleasant, isn't it? I love this song. It's it's a great song. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. All right. All right, Mr. Joe Pierce. Thank you for entering the dojo. It was great to talk to you. Do you have any final words out there for Dojo Nation, Uber and Lyft drivers across the country? I just really hope that Lyft gets their shit together. I don't know if it's going to happen. It it is what it is, and that's the life of a rideshare driver. You just kind of have to figure out what what works out best for you. I was doing Lyft for about three years exclusively. Now for about the past month and a half, I've been doing Uber exclusively because of Lyft's missteps. Uh, you just you just kind of have to you have to have all these all these options. You gotta you gotta yeah. keep keep those keep those open. So keep, keep rolling yeah. with it. What percent what percentage do you get paid with so you've been doing this almost six years. Are you at eighty percent, eighty five percent? 80%. Oh, oh yes. Um, my original commission you're yeah. talking. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Eighty percent. So eighty for both. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Five yeah, percent higher than than most drivers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I got in. I got in right at the at the end of the eighty percent for Lyft, um, but I missed it with Uber. So I'm at seventy five percent with uh, with Uber. That's another reason why yeah. I prefer Lyft. Um, but um, good to know. Yeah. All 5% right. Five percent. Five percent is is big. That that adds up over a year for sure. 
Oh, it definitely. Yeah. That's like in a hundred thousand dollar year, that's five, six thousand dollars. Yeah, that's yes. That's that is money. It's huge. That is money. Great. All right, Joe. Great talking to you. Thank you very much. Of course, Jay. Thanks for having me. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to do online work you love from anywhere in the world. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily, in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things Rideshare Dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.